Hola. This is my microphone. That's the bride section, and that's the groom section. Uh, so, welcome to the final panel uh, at BME. Um, thank you very much for coming, obviously, and for uh, attending all the panels. Um, we did this last year as well, and the idea is, is just to, to talk and to, and to muse and to be, uh, and, and just to sort of predict or, or have conversations about where we think the industry is heading. So first off, I would like our panelists to introduce themselves. And uh, my name is Shane Shapiro. I'm with a company called Sound Diplomacy, and I'm your moderator. So can our wonderful panelists who are done with their phones please introduce themselves? Yeah, I put my phone down. My name's Jason, and I run a London office for a Japanese promoter. And we do a couple of festivals in Japan, one of which is Fuji Rock. I'm Scott Cook. I'm Scott Cohen, uh, founder of The Orchard, large digital distribution company, and do a lot of things in the music business. I'm Bob Lefsetz. I write a newsletter about the music business. I'm Matias Loisa from Argentina. Uh, I work at Pop Art Music, an integral music promoter, record label, booking agency, etc. Okay, so the last three days uh, have been about what we call music and new tech, and the whole point is to make more money for those who make music in one way or another. And I want to start with you, uh, Bob. Um, I want you, you know, for, what is the most exciting prospect for you in terms of revenue generation for, for musicians that you're seeing? Is it, is it something traditional or is it something new? And, and why do you think that? I just think conceptually you can reach everybody in the world very easily for free. That's the most exciting thing. All that stuff is conceptual. It all comes down to the music, but if you make a great song, like the Calvin uh, Harris summer song, a hit around the world, get lucky, a hit around the world, in ways that we've never seen before. And that's the most exciting thing to me, how you, how you add layers of uh, technology and monetization on top of, that, top of that are interesting, but nowhere near as interesting as the ubiquity of music and the ability to reach people with it. I, I would, oh, are we allowed to debate? Absolutely. <laughs> That's the whole point. Interrupt, please. It, it, except you, you, you said, you know, you have these platforms to reach people for free, except it doesn't work that way. It would be like saying radio, you can get on radio for free, but really, is that how it works? or? Are there other costs involved? And uh, okay. theoretically, yes, it's free and free to the consumer, but nobody's really had a huge career out of reaching people for well, free. Well, it's a lie, isn't it? Well, there's two it's levels free. of free. I agree with you, but I'm also really also talking about the other side. It's someone can check you out for free. That's the amazing part. Okay. Now, what it takes to bubble up and to be noticeable, that's a whole different ballgame. But for some reason you are. Everybody in the world has access to your music and can check you out at essentially no cost. So for me, now we have a, a few promoters on the, on the panel as well. And one of the things, and, and we touched upon it, Bob, in, in our conversation on Wednesday as well, is are we reverting back to more traditional ways of making money despite having so many different structures that you can possibly make money in? What I'm saying is, is playing live is still the biggest revenue generator. generator it, it, and is it that is now, but in the, in the olden days, you went out playing live uh, so you could sell, see, uh, sell records. So your income was from your records and you're selling the music and your live was to promote the, the records. Now it's the other way around. Now you need a record to promote your live shows and now you, it, your income is all from live shows. And more and more, they're getting their income from festivals, where, because the festivals are where they see the big money. Yeah, but, but with that, I think also, it, the, the, the figures are quite skewed, because I think the live business is shit. The, the live business is great if you're a superstar where you're playing festivals, which is a very small subset of the acts. But this idea of going on tour and building an audience and playing city to city and generating enough money, I think bands make m less now touring than ever before. 
venues are shutting down. This isn't a thriving business. It's good so, for yeah, the so very yes. top. Let, let me disagree. I mean, y yes Please? and no. Uh, I mean, there's more, as Bob just said, there's more bands nowadays than ever before. Uh, not all of them are making money, but we're not into music only to make money. I mean, that is what the big corporations are about. But any, you can ask any musician and he's happy doing music. Of course, they want to live of making music. And I, I'm, I'm optimistic about the future. I, I think we're living in a time where it's really easy to make a really good song. I mean, it's really cheap to make a really good song. You have to have a, a tablet or, a, I don't know, the, the iPhone 6 Plus or whatever may, has the ability already to record and make a good song. So I think we're in the range of, of a jump that that's going to be like, if now we're, there's a lot of musicians in five or ten years there's going to be much 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 more and it's going to be easier not only to make music but to make it public is it that means that you're going to make money out of it well that that isn't you know directly um related to to being popular if you know why I mean. does every, i agree with you why does every musician believe he's entitled to make a living I mean, we see this in all, but there used to be in the 80s multiple computer manufacturers. IBM sold their computer manufacturing to Lenovo. It's basically Lenovo and HP and Apple and one or two other brands. We see consolidation and, and, and reduction of inefficiencies in so many other areas. The same thing is happening in music. I don't give a shit if you can't get paid. Yeah. Because if for some reason you make something good, you have to turn people away. This is why there's so much money in touring. I mean, it used to be that there was always scalping, but the tickets were inexpensive and demand was greater than the supply. What they did was say, okay, we can't make the money on records. We'll jack up the price. And everybody who's a hit act, you cannot get a ticket to their show. And they're charging a fortune. Now, we can talk about the fact that the fan can't get a good ticket, which I believe is a problem, and the point that the prices are high, but I was in uh, walking through the Old Town, and they had an iPhone 6 Plus for the equivalent of $1,200. That's like a $400 markup from what it is in the United States. But if you want it, that's what you have to pay. So, in terms of your initial question about Money, if you are a successful artist today, you are making more money than you've ever made in the history of the business. You're not making as much money as a banker, you're not making as much money as the people who, you know, selling apps to uh, Facebook, but you're making a lot of money because, yes, you have some recorded income, which I believe will go up, but even if it doesn't. Your, toy, your point about the festivals, what they pay a festival headliner is just insane. I mean, you want to go on, you know, and it's like Outcast may never work again. They played all the festivals in uh, the United States and they got horrible reviews, but they were paying seven figures to do so, okay? You can make endorsement sponsorship deals. They are lining up to make those deals. So at the top of the market, the opportunities are ripe. If you're developing, it's a different game. If you're in the middle, that's a difficult road so, to so are we, is the business, uh, you know, I, can, I can't speak of the way it used to be, but is the business more like, a fun, like, a, um, like an hourglass, where there's people at Absolutely. the top, very few people I in the middle, put that way, and shitloads yes. of people at the bottom? Yeah, and is it's that just, a problem? And it's just like, like in many countries, to be a poor person, to make it rich, it's a very hard journey. So, yeah, it, it, if, if you were to look at um, how many people win the lottery, you know, not the little scratch card where you win like five euros, but like win the euro millions or, you know, one of the big lotteries. And then you compare that to how many people have a platinum album. Your, your odds are way better playing the lottery. There's way more lottery winners. <laughs> there's, there's not many headliners around. So when you're saying you pay the seven. But the problem is, is there's no one developing headliners. I mean, what are the, the most recent headliners are the Arctic Monkeys and before that Coldplay. There's no other new headliners out there. Well, I mean, They're in, all in old bands from 20, 30 years ago. I agree with you, but two things. One, yes, it was a classic rock business for a long time, but we've really seen in America a shift to the younger generation. And one of the acts is English. Uh, at the beginning of the year, Sam Smith, who's only been in the marketplace for a year, is going on an arena tour. 15 to 20,000 seats. 
We have a lot of younger acts in America who can play arena tours. Can they play worldwide? Not necessarily. No. But they're not oh, a yes. headliner. Sam no, Smith no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. You're in the festival business, and we're moving to a great degree towards a yeah. festival world. If you have a festival, you know, those are double-digit million budgets, and you need people going to bring people in. And so far, yes, you're probably right. We don't have some, we haven't built, but we're in the process. I used to be just like you. I used to be, say, oh, there's nothing like classic rock, but the younger people have found their acts. Well, and it's that maybe this is something to think about in the future is, is this crossover from EDM into pop, which I believe is infiltrating everywhere globally. And now we're finding headliners that can fill uh, stadiums uh, that, are, that are dance acts, essentially, that pop acts. Is that, I, I see that as positive, is that democ democratizing, essentially, the live setup because again playing in a band is fucking expensive like you have to cart all your shit around all the time well, and when you're just starting out it's a, and if you're a dj it's a lot cheaper and maybe the barrier to entry is changing pop acts are really expensive as well maybe more expensive than rock acts and and r and b and and the crossover between edm and pop what you're saying it's what's in fashion right now but if we're talking about the future yeah. i think it's going to come and go as as all the trends have so no one knows. I mean, the, the, the only fact that anyone can, can grab a guitar or a DJ or, whatever, or a computer and, and use live Ableton, you know, the program to do music, etc., it's, it's only positive, I think. I mean, it's, it means that the music business yeah. is going to keep on moving and changing, etc. The only thing that frightens me, but th this is on a personal note, is the blockbusters are getting even bigger and bigger and bigger and the whole long tail thing that we bought and we but thought in a way it's it's well you, but what you about the question you know the, the the idea is it's the older acts that are the big headliners now on festivals who's going to be the next one is you know will 20 years from now people go oh my god we're going to see one direction and miley no, like, oh, no, I, no, 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 it's a serious question. I don't want to confuse, it. I don't want to confuse it too much. I mean, because if you go, it Rewind used to festival. be, what will be the music of the younger generation? If you go to a wedding or a bar mitzvah or a Sweet 16 party now, there's a DJ, and they are playing today's hits. We're up until like four years ago, they would be playing Motown hits. There has been a shift, and I remember uh, there's a couple of things here. Who says that music has to be made by a band? I have a friend who's a big A&R guy at Atlantic, Mike Karen, has a three-year-old, and said the three-year-old can use the iPad. That's his music development tool. So I remember being at Coachella two and a half years ago, which is one of the world's premier festivals, and you know, one of the headliners was Radiohead. And Radiohead, they played Saturday night. They started with most of the audience, which they lost. The night before, it was Swedish House Mafia, Okay, which certainly isn't an ancient act. And they're headlining, they had more people than Radiohead. And they were better than Radiohead. I mean, just you can feel the energy. Now the fact that that particular act has mutated, there's not a promoter alive who won't say, if I could get Daft Punk to headline, it would make my uh, festival. So I really do think there is a transition and I don't really think, you know, I, this is one of the funny things about the festivals. They reunite the replacements. They do all this stuff. And I'm talking primarily in America. Some of these bands don't mean much in the rest of the world. Those are old people. Old people don't want to go to the festival. They're not the ones who are paying the money. But, sorry, you're talking about Coachella. Coachella is like uh, the Ferraris or the Mas I mean, it's like mm -hmm. one exception to the whole world, I think so. But I mean, in the, in the rest of the world, maybe, Swedish shows Mafia against Radiohead, Radiohead still will, will sell more. No, Maybe no, no. Let, let me be clear. If, if you're at the festival, you pay once. Yeah. So for those of us who are going to observe, which is people yeah, here yeah. on the stage, one would think that Radiohead is a bigger act yeah. amongst the audience. That turns out not to be true. Now the world's biggest, or America's, not, not the world. America's biggest festival is the Electric Daisy Carnival in Las Vegas. It's in Las Vegas because it's the only place where people die and people don't care. <laughs> uh, no, there's I'm, loads I'm, of places like that. Unfortunately, Camden, that's, that's literally true. Uh, three people died this year. When they die in Los Angeles, they can't have, so they moved it to Las Vegas. I happened to go, okay? Essentially, no press. None. 
Now let me be there. I'm there with, you know, nearly 100,000 people. I can see it with my own eyes. I'm writing about it, but no one else is. And this is a disconnect between the media and the mainstream. So there's a lot of stuff that's happening in a big number that is not necessarily what's being talked about in the newspaper. And, and for me, that bring, you know, that, that introduces another point is, are we seeing the, the, the sort of development of the music industry into many music industries? for lack of a better word, is that like we have our pop industry, American, British-led pop industry that still dominates a certain subsection, but we said there are certain Latin artists that can sell out Five Nights at Madison Square Garden that I've never heard of, and how do you think that that's going to continue, that music industries are either going to become more uh, culturally specific, more national, or more international, and, and how do you feel this impacts well, the difference is, is if you were in a South American act, it was much harder to notify all your North American fans that you were coming. Whereas today, with internet, et cetera, and this is one of the great things, everybody who's a potential fan can be aware that you're there. In addition, you can buy the ticket on the internet. I mean, some of you here may not be old enough when you literally had to go to the box office to buy a ticket. Wait a minute. The night before and camp out with your friends. Exactly. <laughs> Sleep on the street so you could get a ticket to your favorite uh, concert. Yeah, I remember doing that. I did that one. But as I say, so there's a democratization. Yeah. But speaking to your other question, um, one of the great things about music is the startup costs are low, so things always change. We have the electronic music now. You talk about uh, Latin America. Um, so that people can make headway. But at the end of the day, I believe in the major sphere there will be fewer players. Will it be multiple types of music? Yes, but pop is an international sound. If you look in America, in the last couple of decades, it's always been American acts exported around the world. And that's not true anymore. In America, a lot of the acts are from Britain and around the world, like Calvin Harris's summer song, that was a hit around the world before it was a hit in America. And he certainly, David Guetta, huge around the world. So, and also don't, don't, don't underestimate sorry, the power guys, of cheese, you know. Power, power of what? Cheese, we love cheesy music, you know, we ah. can. Middle oh. of the road sells. Yeah, and, 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 and I don't close. touch it. But if something is tremendously popular, no, everyone looks at it like, oh, it's crap. Why would I want to hear that? But honestly, then 10 years later, oh, that, it becomes classic. I mean, the, the stuff from the 80s that even in the 80s we knew was bad. Milio and Anini. then all of a sudden yeah. people are like, oh, it's great. And I'm like, yeah. really? Because we didn't really even like Why it Why is then? everyone so interested in a Queen revival without even Freddie Mercury? It seems to be like posters everywhere for Queen. It's like... Who's interested? I want to know. Because I'm not. No, but That's a fascinating let me, let me thing. Speak, yeah, because, let me say one thing. Yep. The act that sells more tickets in Latin America is an act from Latin America, not an American act. So, yes. I mean... So it is. Wait, wait, wait. Say that. So you're saying the biggest acts in Latin yeah. America are Latin America. The acts that sell more tickets in Latin America are acts from Latin America. It's, like, who's the biggest? Well, in Argentina, there's a band from Uruguay called No Te Va Gustar, and this, they're going to sell two stadiums next year. I don't think there's Rolling Stones just postponed okay, their... Okay, just let's get back. If they play a stadium, what's the gross? Well, but I'm... I'm, not, I'm, I'm we're, we're talking yeah, yeah, about, I'm talking about here, selling right? tickets. I'm not talking about the gross. I mean, oh, of well, course... Well, if you're if selling you sell... tickets, there is a gross. Well, well, 50,000 yeah, people there was a, there was Well, in Latin America, it's often let me say, underwritten by brands. Yeah, there, so there the was, ticket sorry, price to the consumer... There was an act from Latin America last year from Argentina that sold 200,000 tickets, one huge, massive show. The gross wasn't huge because oh, so the ticket was cheap. But again, no one else, even though it wasn't that cheap, it might have been, I don't know, $40, $50. Uh, maybe a festival has a, a, an average ticket price of $100 or $150. But then again, you have to sell 200,000 tickets on a single show. It's well, huge. In, in Germany, I think still the largest market is... slogger music, right? Still Sorry. in Germany, Excuse me? The, one of the, the largest market in Germany is Schlager music, is domestic. Yeah, but let's go back to Germany. So, I happen uh, to have been. Love going back to. Germany. I happen to have been a big Kraftwerk fan, and although they had a hit with the song Autobahn, they broke broke through again with an album in America called Computer World. And if you were a big fan, you got the German version, which was Computer Welt or Welt, whatever, and they sung in German. So I say to these acts that are big in Argentina, I think that's fantastic that they're selling 200,000 tickets. 
but I'm hearing a little bit of the edge. It's like an Enrique, Enrique Iglesias. If you want to play the rest of the world, you got to sing in English. You just have oh. to. Yeah, if you're happy where you're at, I'm just yeah, like, Maybe you're happy where you're at. If you're happy with it, that's great. Never so, met an artist that's, that's happy where they're at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's my question to, to you guys, especially, okay, we have a, a festival that books international artists in Japan, and you book Japanese artists, presumably, as well. Yeah, I mean, and, and our what's... festival is probably, uh, I'd say, 30 to 40% Japanese artists. So, Are there Japanese headliners? We don't have Japanese headliners. No, so our, that, our festival is, there are 80 festivals in Japan. There are only two that book foreign artists. One is Fuji, the other is Summer Sonic. And, and All who, the others are strictly Japanese and artists. And the Japanese uh, festivals, what kind of numbers can they do? Well, a Japanese-only festival, the ticket would be half the price of uh, an international festival like ours, and uh, maybe less than half the price, and their numbers would be, let's say, 150,000 compared to my 100,000. Some of the big ones, like Rock in, rock in Japan, okay, so Rock saying, Fest in wait, wait, Japan. Saying, so the Japanese headline of things would have more people because they're cheaper? It's cheaper, and they're also more famous because Japanese music sells more than foreign music in Japan. So as, so as you it, say, in Latin okay, America, but, 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 Latin just, American let's, let's artists go. are bigger than foreign artists. And your headliners this year were? This year we had Arcade Fire, uh, Jack Johnson, and Franz Ferdinand. So... That's what I'm saying is, so we have the tools to, to make music completely global and borderless and everything, but potentially my hearing that it's still where you're from, every, every country is becoming, or, or remaining maybe is the word, more independent of itself in terms of what sells but That's most. not true. Yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 there's always been a local business, my job but to. in terms of the fact that Franz Ferdinand can headline in Japan is astounding. That's because there weren't many headliners around last year. Exactly. And that's but what I'm saying, is that, is that you have to sort of create headliners when they there aren't an album any out. They had a new so album out, apparently. Yeah, no, I mean, they're good. They're a good band. But, you know, do they, are they strong enough to headline? I don't think so. But by the same but token, again, let me ask when you, you're stuck uh, for every Jason, other headliners, would, would, you Miley have Cyrus, would Miley Cyrus or any of the pop acts be a well, Miley Cyrus Fuji? would no. not, would, it would turn people away from our festival. Yeah. You know, they'd see Miley Cyrus on a Fuji rock bill and they go, ooh, why are they booking that? They just, it's totally wrong. It's like us trying to book AK, AKB48 with a 48 piece. Japanese girl pop band, which, you know, they sell probably 10 fucking stadiums, you know, in Japan. There's 48 of them. There's so, 48 you know. of them. They're dead cute as well. My <laughs> God, you know. So Take this, any one of them. The best be American football team ever, right? <laughs> but this is, all the, this is all the present. I thought but we were that, supposed to be But that's speaking exactly about what I'm future. saying. Is our, what do you feel, where do you feel it's going? Is, is are, are we moving into a place where it will continue to be easier for a Uruguayan or Argentinian act to, to establish its market locally? Which means, does it mean that it makes it harder for those acts to export, despite all the tools we have? I, I How do you feel what, it's going, I or is it changing? It or? depends on when you're looking. If you're looking to, for the next 10 years, I think it's definitely easier. It will be much, 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 much easier. In the short run, again, it depends. I mean, the tide now is that blockbusters are even bigger, and they sell 90% of the stock or whatever. Uh, but again, I believe that in the near future, it will again, you know, the long tail arise, and the niche markets will. I, thi I think you're seeing the superstars pulling away, the one percenters. Yeah. And, but with that said, it's, it's, y you have to know what game you're playing. So if you're in the pop business, then that's the game you're playing, and the yeah. one percenters are bigger than ever. But just like in the film business, there's big Hollywood movies with explosions, and, and you know, it has to have this many romantic scenes, and then it has to finish with a happy ending. And those do what they do. And then there's people that make film for art and make independent films and have no aspirations or no belief that it's going to win big awards and make lots of money. If artists can, can start to get in their head clearly which, which bucket they fall into, because the, the, the music business has been so binary for the last 50 years. Either you succeed or you fail. You sell 500,000 albums and you go, wow, they're big. No, nope, not big enough. You're dropped. Because everyone shoots for the big thing. And it's kind of like um, in sports. There's a self-awareness that seems to be lacking in the music industry. You know, if, if, if I play sports, 
maybe I recognize that I'm not good enough to be in the Olympics. I'm not good enough to play soccer for Chelsea. You know, I'm just not good enough. I don't see that self-awareness in artists and sometimes in the industry around them, their managers, their labels, to really say, actually, they're never going to be that, but we can still do something on another level. And I think there's an opportunity there that nobody seems to play for. They play for either I'm big or that's it. So just going here to the headline, I looked up the headliners. Headliners, these are the biggest festivals in America. Coachella, literally EDC is number one and Coachella is uh, biggest of the rest. But Lollapalooza and ACL are the next biggest. Headliners at Lollapalooza, Eminem, 14 years old. Outcast, a decade old. Kings of Leon, a decade. Arctic Monkeys, a decade. Skrillex, a couple of years old. Calvin Harris, Lord. And then it goes on, Foster the People. Now, I granted to sell a Japanese festival. I don't necessarily believe maybe Eminem could headline, but these are new Eminem acts. Eminem did headline Fuji, yeah. but it was in 99. Okay. The point so is, when it was these, these are not classic rock acts. Same thing with... Uh, Austin City Limits, Eminem, Pearl Jam, Pearl Jam is 20 years old, we'll Outkast, Skrillex, Beck, Calvin Harris, Lana Del Rey, you know, it's not Leonard Skinner. <laughs> so I really think that we have seen a turnover in the acts that do headline. As far as, you know, unlike everybody else, I'm not in the false hope business. And everybody wants to get rich, society's rough. If you're playing to 200 people and you play for 20 years and you're happy, fine. Just don't call me and complain that you're not playing to 200,000. Okay, last night I saw a band called The Coup. They're a band that is yeah. absolutely fucking brilliant live. But are they going to sell loads of tickets and loads of records and ever get famous? I don't think so. But would I book them? Fuck right I would. Because they're a band with the, the, with the big fucking heart. It was so right. much fun to be in the and audience. So much, you know, yeah. a brilliant band. But will they succeed in the industry? Probably not. Because they don't play the game. So they, the, they play a game. You have to. That's yeah, yeah. the thing. It's you need to know which game you're playing. Like, um, you, you, has anyone played poker? You know poker. So, so, so there's a saying at a poker table who that poker? if you don't know who the sucker at the table is, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think of that when people are complaining about the music industry. It's you. You you don't know which game you're playing. Well put. Now, it, mm -hmm. No, I think what Bob was saying just now, it's, it's especially for America. I think nowadays we're, we're in the burst, almost, you know, the bubble, the internet bubble, etc. I think it's going to burst anytime soon now. Because huge Again? headliners, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because huge headliners, <laughs> such as some of the acts Bob just mentioned, are asking way too much money to go to emerging markets, to South America or, you know. So we end up not booking them, or they do come, but you lose a lot of money, so next time around you don't pay them that much money. So the problem is, in next year or whatever, you don't have those headliners. They, they ask too much money, okay, I don't go there, I don't, just don't care. They stay in America. They maybe yeah, and same also sometimes these, these bands miss the boat, so you've got to yeah. work a territory, so you've got to go there for cheap, you've got to play the small rooms. You may be big in America, big in Europe, but if you want to go to Japan, you might have to play a, a small club, 500 people. And a lot of these bands miss that opportunity, and they get so big, they can't afford to go to Japan, and you've lost a whole market there. It's like... Black Keys are a good example where they're now headlining festivals around the world and in Japan, they're nothing because they haven't worked the territory. They've, they've never been out there playing and building up their... their so that, that's so an are excellent we seeing, point. I know yeah, acts like are we that. seeing more of an emphasis on touring then, going back to the original you, you point? You need to and go out that, there and play in front of people. Is that where we're, well, where we're headed or where, we can, where we've never left? So if we're talking about the future, how come we're not talking about digital music? I'm, I'm not talking because about, I have a question whoa, 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 later for that. What like, are we we're defining we're on as this topic now? What are we defining? <laughs> right. What are we defining as digital music? CDs? No. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean, we, we're already there. Yeah. You know, one great thing about the music right, business is we're ahead. Question. You want to ask it? No, no. Keep you going. ask, and then he'll still give you the same answer. Just it, well, it. it's a slightly, you know, I, I, yeah. It, keep going. No, 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 no. I want to hear it. You're an intelligent doctor. You know, form the question. <laughs> Kicking on, kicking on the moderator. Um, no, well, my, my question was more about 
the concept of curation and online and, and the future of curation. And with all the, with all the uh, outlets that we have to discover music and listen to music, what is the future? Um, is it in radio or some sort of radio? Well, okay, is know, it, and then that lead that was going to lead into us talking about digital every media. One of, every one of these motherfucking <laughs> assholes tracks me down. They always say, I have solved the problem. One of these people, shit, all of a sudden I can't remember their name, not Shazam, but they had a playlist, songs up. Songs, okay, we're great. They pivoted from something else. They don't give a shit about music. They give a shit about money. And they ultimately sold out a couple of months ago. So, I don't have any sympathy for any of these people. If you really care that much about music, make a fucking band. Make a hit record. Otherwise, you're just a zit on the ass of the business, okay? <laughs> so, in this particular case, unlike the movie business and the television business, we've solved our problem, other than in Japan, actually. We have streaming services everywhere. So we have music on demand, whether it be for free or for a small monthly price. That is the end. What we've learned on the internet is only one company triumphs. There's one Google, there's you know, one Apple, there's one Amazon, everybody else is fighting over scraps. So we have that. So what to li this goes to your point about the niches. This is why the niches are dead. We live in an incomprehensible society, a Tower of Babel society, about the only thing you and me have in common is we wear clothes and we go to the bathroom and we actually speak. That's it, okay? I used to have this radio show in Los Angeles. That's the number one radio market in America. And in America, it's going back about six years, on, the, the, on your cable network, Discovery Channel was number three. And if you know anything about TV systems, that two is the best. The lower, the better. And I used to watch this program. It was a series on climbing Mount Everest. I never found another person who had seen the show until I talked about it on the radio and somebody called in. So when you go to see this band, the business has changed. It's great. There was an article in the New York Times on Sunday. You used to be able to say, I bought the rare record and I'm a snob. Anybody who's a snob today about their music taste, I just laugh hysterically, okay? You're living way off on the side of the world. We are all looking for things to hang on to. We want to like what everybody else likes so that we can talk about it. So the huh? question is how will they, to no, rephrase this, so how there. are they gonna find exactly. it? Well, that, that, you know, that's exactly what I was So recommendation next. is bullshit? What? I mean, you know recommendation. No, no, no. Recommendation is everything. Niches are bullshit. We want to listen. We, every, how many people watch Breaking Bad just because everybody else was talking about Breaking Me. Bad? Okay? So, we no, want to be told what to listen to. And I covered some of this the other day, but I'll go very quickly through it. That is not a scalable business. For all I know, there could be somebody in this room who knows exactly what to listen to. In today's marketplace, no one is going to give you $5 million in startup money and do it because it doesn't scale. So what we have is these bullshit technologists with their algorithms which come up with stuff that we don't want to hear. Yeah. I think... Uh, I, see, I would disagree with you because I, I, I did some kind of quasi-Turing test where I took playlists from radio stations and then I took algorithmic playlists and asked people could they tell which was done by a machine and which were songs picked by a human and nobody could tell the difference. Well, well, well I mean, that, that, you gotta be kidding me. I mean, not, don't, I mean well, you're, you're, you're in America I mean, listening wait, 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 to Wait, 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 wait. Were the people familiar with the songs? No, no, so if I did a pop playlist. No, 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 I'm starting, from the, I'm starting from the beginning. The people who you played this music for. I didn't play, I showed a list. Did of, they know the tracks? Yeah, yeah, they would know the artists. Correct. Okay, so you're saying the 10 pop tracks, they actually knew those tracks. You're saying tracks, I'm saying artists, because a lot of people don't often know. No, that, oh, that, 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 I got a big problem here. There are, people, there are people who are fans and people who aren't. No, what I'm saying is if you turn on the radio and they have put together 12 songs for that hour and they, they, they say this is a radio station, this is a top 40 station, and then you ask an algorithm, give me, based on these two acts put together a top 40 playlist, you won't, tell, you won't be able to tell the difference. Okay, let's to be a practical. You don't have this service in America, but you have equivalent service here. In America, it's called Pandora. 
uh, you know, if you build a Pandora station, the, so what they're recommending is so far off base. Now, if you want to say to an algorithm, pick 10, hit X, well, the algorithm, but that's not what the algorithms do. If you listen to iTunes radio, you plug in one band and they suggest stuff around that. So if you say, to, I can Google right now, say, give me 10 hit X, they're going to give me 10 hit X. But if just you, like if I go on to Spotify. But if you did I, Spotify but, and did Pearl Jam radio, it would feel. It does it. Have you done it? I have. It, to me, it does it. Everybody I talk to, I mean, everyone's well, anybody who says they love Pandora, love those services, knows say nothing about Pandora. it. But what about something like Pins. KCRW's Eclectic 24, for example? But, like something like that in terms of... I don't John know Peel? Was, okay, let's John Peel? Is that something that we could look, look to in the future? Jason like, Bentley is a friend of mine, but... What I hate more about KCRW is the people who listen to KCRW. Okay? Uh, yeah, okay. You know, That's a personal problem. Wow. You know, you know, I mean, those shot people, through the heart. You know, they're holier than thou. And, and KCRW certainly has some power. But let's just assume they can pick 24 good tracks. They are not doing <laughs> a good job of amplifying their picks. I mean, but who are you to? But who are you to say that as well? No, 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 like, no, no, no. Like, why, why, no, but no, that's no. The thing. I, I, anyway, but let's just be clear what we're talking about. Okay. I'm not talking about their 24 choices. I'm talking about spreading the word about their 24 choices. Okay. Oh, so that's a completely will, different discussion. So, so that's what I said. Because so, uh, that's the thing. When we're talking about how so do we discover how music will in the people future, find it? Is how there going to be is there going to be one person that <laughs> that or one computer that picks all the best songs and everyone gravitates to it? We already have that. It's Which, called the fucking radio, and they're listening to things that everybody away. hates here. But it's they're going listening away. to Katy Perry. Katy, they're listening to Taylor Swift. Everybody hates those acts. But those, those are acts that are here, and everybody else is down there. So what you're asking is, <laughs> can somebody pull the acts that I don't hate so everybody will listen to? No, 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 no. I'm not even... Let me come in there. I think that's why you have festivals and good festival bookers like myself and um, Matthias here. Because we know what we want to share with our audience. And so when they come <laughs> and see, oh, big headliner, oh, here's Bjork, I want to go see that. What we do is we put other stuff around it. And so when you go to a festival, you find stuff. And like I said, last night I found the coup because you put together a lineup. Somebody booked them. That sounds Somebody good, like, but that's a complete crock of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I think people do wait, find... Wait, wait. <laughs> Paul Toledo, who books Coachella, I argue them every year. I want you to name one band that's broken from a festival. One. Broken from um, a festival? This guy's whole future or something? No, no. I mean, let's be clear. That's not what it is. Festivals need to fill out the undercard. A place like Coachella, they'll have two main stages and three tents. That's usually a classic formula. Again, okay? Bob, you're so, talking... Wait, wait. So they have to yeah. fill out the undercard. They have to get 20 to 40 acts to play. So it's called a festival. And people are grazers, like a smorgasbord. They go and they listen. Not a single act has ever graduated from the undercard to the top. Foster the people? Foster the People was nah. a big radio. Foster the People I in America you keep, didn't you know, start out at the bottom of radio. Let's get back to the point here. I, We're talking about go, artists. Shane, going so back to what you said yeah. before, if, if it's one industry or, or a lot of small industries, I definitely believe it's one big industry, of course, the one Bob and Scott are talking about, the, the US, the huge, the blockbusters, the Katy Perry's, etc. And there, there are small industries, maybe not multi-million dollar industries, but there are artists like, I don't know, Spinetta from Argentina or uh, poets. I actually agree with you, and I, that's and those the industry guys, sorry, I love, uh, that there's what, this one global pop, let me but just, then local. Yeah, yeah, one last thing. I have a five-year-old daughter. I have uh, a sister who's 20-year-old, and they fucking love a song by Spinetta. And, of course, I, I, I put it and I said, listen to this. But that amazes me. I mean, if, if in the future there's another guy or another Bjork or another David Bowie or another guy, a crazy guy, a crazy poet that sings and, and, and comes up and, and has the luck of being very popular, then that's much, much better, I think, for everybody. And if not, the opportunity is there. I mean, there's a million ways of being uh, well-known today. So is curation essentially being brought back to the beginning? Is it being simplified where it's really what your friend, what your brother, what your sister? Let's, let's stop uh, with curation. Or, I want to go back to curation. First thing I want to say, and Scott will disagree with me, but I'll say it anyway. <laughs> Good. We have a worldwide population that is looking for good things. That is all they're doing 24-7. If you are really that good, you will not be unknown. 
Yeah. There's no greater pleasure than to say, oh, you have to listen to this or watch this because this is great. The problem is not that people aren't sharing. The problem is there's not enough great stuff to go around. I, I, would, I would disagree with you for a different reason than you even think. I don't think wow. anyone's looking for anything. Oh, I, I totally disagree. I think people are, are just passive and it's coming across No, 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 no. You're, you're, you're bringing up, a, you're bringing up an excellent, excellent point. To people or, are uh, overwhelmed, okay? People are overwhelmed. It's too tough to keep up. Every week there's new albums. It's like, who's got all the time to listen That's to? That's what I'm saying. They're not searching like, they're, they're hoping somebody's going to deliver them something. No, what, what do we know? We have a business, unlike before, that is run between you and me. It's not run by the top people. The top people start selling. Thing only gains, and gains traction if we talk about it. It's funny, the guy from the LA Times is retweeting me this morning. Two weeks ago, the guy from Radiohead, Tom York, put out an album that's already over. We have read about the press for a week, et cetera. So the point, he did a good job with the press. He just didn't do a good job with you. So the key is, if you're starting, how do you get people to spread the word? And when they spread the word, you have a success. And what we want is, we want a trusted filter to tell us it's good because we're overwhelmed with the quantity of stuff. Will there ultimately be somebody who does that? I believe there will, but it's a cultural thing because the person who does it has to understand today where everything's a click away. I grew up in the radio era where if it was bad, you had to listen to it to get to the next track. Today, <laughs> you just click forward, okay? Someone who understands recommending means I have to like most of what you recommend, and they know that is their job. It's a very difficult job. I believe there will be somebody who do it. In the interim, we have this crazy pop world. But it's, as Scott says, it's just nuts. You don't know what's going on. Yeah, because at the end of the day, you know, back to your hourglass, your funnel, it, you, don't, you don't want that much music. If I said to you, you had to listen to a new album every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, it's too fucking much. It's exhausting. You're lucky yeah. if, if you discover, because yeah. I'm looking at the audience, no teenagers in here. Nowadays, as you get a little older, if you get one new thing a year that you like, that's fine. That's actually plenty. I don't, because I actually have everything I've always liked. I can't hear even one new thing a week is too much. Now we're back to one new song a week. It's like, holy crap, it's too much. So is it the burden increasing, for example? Or maybe I worded that wrongly, but do, you know, you're saying, well, I agree, Matisse, when you said there's just more and more and more and more and more. Yeah. Um, from a business perspective, for, this is about the business, is that a good thing? Or is that just watering down or, or making this hourglass worse? What do you, what do you Everyone think? Everyone agrees. It was better in the old days. <laughs> it, Everyone agrees. When it was corrupt. The bottom could, line is there were 5,000 tracks. You to go outside to go to there the were, toilet. Yeah. You know, there were 5,000 tracks a year. You couldn't record. You needed someone to say yes. We did out 88% of everybody who was playing who needed to be. What did we learn? We, you know, the internet. This is what I love. Democratization. Everybody can play. Did we find all these unsigned bands that the major labels didn't sign? No. Yeah. They were looking for stuff they could sell all day long. So, yes, we're never going back to the past, where CDs are 10 to $20, where we only have a limited amount of music, we all listen to the same radio. So we're in an era of chaos. The good thing is recorded music has been figured out, in that we're at streaming and there are streaming services. So that's the end, okay? There's nothing beyond that, okay? So, what to listen to? That's a giant problem. I think people nowadays, especially kids, you know, they, they can get all their music for free. They go on YouTube, go on uh, all of these sort of platforms of sharing music and so on. They can get all the music they want for free. How do you get them to actually invest in it and actually spend money on an artist they like? Because really, when you like an artist, you invest in them. You support them by buying their T-shirt, buying their record, going to their gigs. And you actually... you. you you have a, an investment in the band because you're a fan. So how do you get that? Now, the, the new kids, how do you get them to invest? And that leads into, handily, one of the themes of, of the conference as well is, is we had uh, Benji yesterday essentially selling stuff that doesn't exist to fans. He says, oh, we'll create 
if you know, we're please buy into this series of products Pre-sense. so we can create something. Yeah, he well, that's what pledge. It. That's yeah. what pledge music essentially does. I want, I want to go back. Is a that is that one of the ways that things are improving no, 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 or no, not? No. Or? Pledge is a way to find money. You know, Benji says it well. I have my credit card. I want to pay. What will you sell me? You don't have anything. But that's two percent of the market. But I want to argue, we do have stars. The fact that you don't like them, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Katy Perry is a gigantic act. I can sit here and say it's singles based, okay? But it sells out arenas everywhere. I went to see Not Pitbull, okay? Pitbull. Is, is Katy Perry big in Latin America? Excuse me? Not as big as in the US. Again, not as big. Uh, yeah, in yeah. England, not as big we, as I in promoted the US. her two years in ago. Japan, years ago. not big at all. But but I'd also have to say, you know, it we're, we're it's not just um, how are we selling records or concert tickets it, or merch in the future. It's literally a paradigm shift of this old product based world of I make something now I need to find enough people to buy it this old industrial revolution concept of mass production which was fueled through mass media now we really are in a shift with mm. it, 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 are you guys familiar with the attention economy what it, I'll, I'll tell you really 30 seconds so in 1971 there was an economist named Herbert Alexander Simon he, he went on to win the Nobel Prize for economics. And in 1971, he had already envisioned this world we live in decades before the World Wide Web. And he said, in an information-rich world, it means the dearth of something, a scarcity of whatever it is that information consumes. So he's saying there's going to be a lot of stuff coming at us. So Twitter feeds, status updates on Facebook, all the music, not 5,000 tracks, songs. but 5 million tracks or 50 million tracks. It's all coming at us. And what is it doing is it, it's creating a scarcity. And it's creating a scarcity of your time. And he says that it's the information that's consuming something. We keep thinking we're consuming information, but it's consuming us. It's consuming our time and attention. And then he coined the phrase, the attention economy. And when you start to get your head around it, it's not, can I sell you a song? It's, can I have three minutes of your time? That's what the world is. And can Katy Perry, with enough singles, get 40 minutes of your time? Um, and you're competing against everything else. And this is the world we're, we're living in, and this is where the money is. Can you find an artist that is making something that will grab somebody's attention, and can you scale it? Well, it's interesting what you're saying. Ooh, one second. Just now, Miley Cyrus came to, to Argentina last week or <laughs> two weeks ago. I know she, there was like uh, two days before there was this camping around, of course, by the ultra fans. She didn't sell out, but there was camping two days before. You know what I mean? So in a way, I think there's... there's there, she's very, very, very popular, of course, in America, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and she's very, very popular amongst a tiny niche of high-class, big-earning people from Latin America. And then, popular-wise, if you have, if you don't have any more money, like for example, in Argentina is a huge crisis nowadays. Everyone knows, so you have to choose what you're going to spend your money in. But that's what you guys do. I mean, I can look, I've been, I've been a Miley Cyrus watcher. She is someone who went out, you, people couldn't buy, buy tickets. The reason they couldn't get tickets is you can't get tickets, it's all a controlled market. The next time she went out as paperless, they got fucked because the true story was demand was not as high as they said. Yeah. Then she's changed her image and she had an unbelievable publicity campaign. If you're in America and you watch the ticket counts, she didn't sell out in America. So what do we know? We know that her fan base is not as thick. It's just like watching the sales chart. The biggest country uh, records of this past year were by this back Florida Georgia line. It's a big act. They have a new track now. Okay, their album came out. It didn't sell as many as Jason Aldean. This is what you guys do for a living. Every musical act is unique, and therefore you have to analyze it in terms of you know how many tickets can it sell? What can the price? That's what a promoter does. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, yeah. so when I, I cannot generalize from Miley Cyrus other than people who were teen idols who tried to become adults. You know, it's sui generis. So saying that, (laughs) 
No, well, you know, this is all revolving around curation. And if curation is about keeping people's attention, and, you know, I'm just thinking, let's, let's give some advice, let's, 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 let's be positive to everyone in the audience. Let's say we have, we have managers and labels and tech companies well, well, and well, stuff. I'm all, I, wanna, I wanna really fuck with this. I'm always positive. <laughs> the point is, people don't wanna look. I am, I am looking for the tip of the pyramid. If I want to go to the movies, I want to see Godfather 2, to me, is the best movie ever made, okay? <laughs> so just because you made it and you spent $20 million doesn't mean I want to see it. Because, as Scott said, I have a limited amount of time. People don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that I don't have time for what you're making. The positive element is I have a huge chunk of time for that which gets through my filter. How can you get through my filter? And in today's you know, level, it has to be great, and it has to have some level of virality. You ha this, listen, this is what I do for a living. I write, okay, and people subscribe, and I do no advertising, no sales, whatever, and it only grows through virality. So I have to be in the marketplace, and I have to be good. I can complain all day long, but by the same token, it works and there's a ceiling, and how big am I relative to this person, and I can go, I'm in the game, but it's about a ton of work and making sure that people in the attention economy make time for you. And, 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 and the time goes both ways. You're putting in the time. This notion of an artist make a song and then stop, <laughs> and <laughs> now somebody's gonna promote it, or you have to beg and plead for them to yeah. do a status update to sell their own shit. It, so, so the people on the other side don't have time, and if you're not putting in the time, recipe for, for failure. And so we live in a world now where you can build your own audience. It may be on somebody else's platform, like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. It's somebody else's platform. You can build them, and you need to be able to communicate with them regularly over a long period of time and grab their attention. The byproduct of that is success. The Just one other thing there. I mean, I love, a friend of mine wrote a book about Dwayne Allman, who was the guitarist of the Allman Brothers, was killed in a motorcycle accident 43 years ago, like last week. But he used to take his guitar to the bathroom. Literally, he used to practice in the bathroom. So you have to see, Classic rock acts, and most of what we talk about here is because of the classic rock paradigm. These were people frequently unattractive, who could not get laid, got lousy grades in school, and were not going to college. So what did they do? They stayed in their bedroom and their basements, and they played for years, for years. And mo by the time they could play, you sat there, and you watch them on stage go, I can't believe this. You know, in England, whether it be Alvin Lee, the speed guitarist from 10 years after, who recently died, or the Grateful Dead, you say, wow, I can't, and I stumbled upon this. Today, because of all the marketing tools, the people don't put in 10 or 20 years rehearsing their skills. They say, I made something, now I'm going to spam the world to sell it. I'm going on Twitter, I'm going on YouTube, you know, I'm just going to Facebook, I'm just going to tell people you have to buy it, and then I'm going to be angry when people don't buy it. This is a problem. Now, the irony would be, if you want to have an operation, you don't say, go to somebody and say, I watched a lot of YouTube, I can do this. Come to my house, I'll cut out your kidney, no problem. You go, whoa, 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 whoa. I want the person who put 20 years in, who went to medical school, etc. So, so in our world, so essentially, we're saying that we live translates. in a, we live in an attention economy, but we have to slow down. No, no, well, is that it, what how you're, about you have, to, you have to hard work? Yeah, yeah. I'm just, what you, what but but I'm what a, but I would also put it a different way. So, Trying if the to. attention economy, you know, the other phrase around that is time is money. So, if you want my time, there's now a price on it. Yeah. There's a price for every person in this room, and Google has already put a price on your head, whether you know it or not. Yeah. And, and they sell that. You are the product. Um, and, you're, and the product is your time, and they're selling it. It's a commodity. And, and, and you, they watch what you do, how long you do it. And so even, you know, I, we were talking about this the other day, you know, with YouTube, it's no longer about how many views you have. 
because a view count will, will, will count after 15 or 30 seconds. They want to know how many minutes per week, on average, a subscriber spends on a channel, and they already figured out what it's worth. And by the way, you're all worth different things, because somebody that makes a lot of money, they'll sell different ads against you versus somebody else. So we're going to see a world where you as people are broken down into the, every second of your life, what is it worth? Well, let's just assume you're successful. <laughs> Sorry, no, no, I was no, a no, little no. bit of a... I, I, I'm just jumping off. We have to keep it positive here. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm let's just assume <laughs> you're successful, okay? You will be, your door and your phone and your inbox will be overrun with all the opportunities from the people here. Every brand will say, I will, everybody from the most credible, which is Red Bull, the things you don't want to associate. Uh, One Direction has a deal with... Uh, gaffer's tape. It's got one direction. I've seen it. They make hundreds of thousands of pounds a year in royalties. Other acts have deals with condoms. Okay, These are just straight deals. You want to have the concert promoted, you can get a sponsor, no problem. And all the really big concert companies are really deep into this. They match people. So your choice will be literally, who do I want to be with how much money will it be and how much do I want to give? You always, and now you don't want to give anything. You don't want their state, your sign on the stage and you want to take all the money. Then, hey, I want to put my stuff in a video game. We've already seen this in the music business with Rock Band. We've seen it with Grand Theft Auto. Once you reach this level, the opportunities are rampant. You can do it old school and say, I'm doing nothing. That's your choice. Or you can do it new school and say, I'm doing so, everything. So, but, so, so on that question, if we're looking, looking into the future, um, even if the future is next year, you know, for me, is that, wh what is the concept of DIY in this? You have every tool <laughs> in the world Dead. to do, yeah, to do it yourself, but we need, but you know, it's the you same can. as it, it's the it's, same it's, as it ever was. Same. You have to start somewhere, okay? And then you start and you see if you get, this is how you know if you have a good song. You make it and you see whether anybody's listening to it other than people you know. If not, it's not a good song. I don't give a shit what you say it's not a good song. It doesn't have any virality. So once you reach a certain level of virality, there's low-level managers. If you're a success, the act will be poached by a big manager. Okay? There are people who are playing clubs. He's not interested but, in people yeah, who are playing Scott, clubs. Yeah, but Scott, you said DIY is dead. Yeah, you you are in charge of a no, system. No, you want, for your headliners, you want people who can sell 20,000, yeah. 40,000 <laughs> tickets. I'm interested in people who are playing clubs. Why would you say I'm not interested in people who play in clubs? Because I would think it'd be a long way from them playing clubs to playing your festival in Japan. That you'd want them to have more success in order to reach your... Uh, you I tell want me. good bands. I want good bands. So I'm not looking at... The band you saw last night, would you book them in uh, Fuji? I'd like to book them at Fuji, yeah. Because I think my audience would love them. Okay, so what would be the... But I, I'd, whether it'll, it, it'll sell a ticket to Fuji, no. But the headliners will. But if they come and they see a band like that, they'll go, wow, that was a brilliant band. Okay, so forget about let's the be really practical. You saw the band, getting their contact information is very easy today. What would be the impediment to literally booking them? Or, or it's... Uh, I don't have the... 100% rights to book all the bands. So we have it's a communal booking within the office. So but you already did I that. I mean, you took in my Jason, office Jason, to agree to do it. Of course, you, know. you took Ondavaga to. I took Ondavaga because oh, I liked is them. An and a couple of act. my people yeah. in the office said, yeah, nice band, book them. Yeah. And, and I booked them and they're, okay, they're how actually how storm the festival. How much do you pay them to play in Japan or an act like that? Why do you want to know how much I pay them? Because there's an economic factor. Because <laughs> he's putting he's together. He's going to write a letter act. about it. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Fuji Rock pays this kind of money. Um, but I want to go back to the whole concept I'd rather of pay DIY. Nothing, actually. I'd exactly. Rather, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I want to go back to the whole concept of, of in terms of the future of terms of. I'm just like Scott. You you are part. Cr you created and you're part creative of a system that has so many tools to understand who listens to your music. Is so, so you're saying that the, com the impediment as we're going is time, and that the only way to develop yourself is to add more time, i.e. more people. So systems in and of themselves are only powerful to a point. In terms what, or, you know, in terms what I'm saying is you, you have some visibility into what's happening that you never had before. Before, you had no idea what was happening with your music. All you, at best, you got 
back from your distributor or your label a statement that told you how much you earned or more typically how much you didn't earn every <laughs> six months um, to tell you what happened in the past. Now you can actually see in real time what's happening so you can react to it. But the tool's not going to make anyone successful. But, on the, but the converse is you can't be successful your, unless you're using the tools. You can't, you can't succeed in today's world being blind to data. But one of these things that I, I, I always feel, and I'm curious what the, how it's working and how you see it working in Latin and South America is, is people are abandoning certain social media sites as well. Uh, you know, teenagers, for example, are leaving Facebook. Not all of them, obviously. That could take a long time. But, and, and yet there's this, you have to be on everything. You have to be on everything. And I'm, I'm curious. Yeah. It's the same way in South America. Yeah, is that, Maybe is that it's a hell a is that? Can I ask a question? It takes longer. Yeah, it I'm, takes I'm a little bit longer. I'm trying to be the devil's advocate. That's I, I just, all right. we, how long, we, this has another 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, 20 minutes. Yeah, I, we have to open I gotta it up run, to questions later. I got to run to later. the toilet real quick. <laughs> oh, I thought it was a question. <laughs> yes, okay. No, so going back, going back. <laughs> That's the point of this panel, right? It's supposed to be fun. Um, yeah, but that's the thing. I, I, when I'm talking to bands, I'm like, if you don't update something, yeah. then, then you shouldn't be on it. Well, we've well, got yeah. a couple of things going on here. What do we know? We're in an era of social media. Do I believe the concept of social media will sustain? I'm not absolutely sure. But for a couple of years, yes. What services will that be? Completely up for grabs. And traditionally, the people in the business have been two steps behind, okay? There was a report, and this is American statistics, that one of the big research companies, most young teenagers are not using Facebook. They have not stopped using social media. They just started using different services. Mm -hmm. It's like this electronic music thing. Live Nation is heavily invested. And I say to everybody, when it's over, we will be the last to know. We'll put the tickets on sale and they won't sell. Because everybody in the audience will say, that's not cool anymore. So I think as an artist, the only thing that's necessary, assuming you're not the world's biggest superstar, because the rules flip and you write your own book, okay, is that you have to have an online presence constantly. What that lo looks like, that's always going to change. And is that in terms of... In terms of Latin and South America as, as well, or, or we can talk about Argentina and the, and the neighboring countries, yeah. uh, you know, from my side, is that <laughs> these reports that teenagers are leaving Facebook, for example, moving to, I don't know, Snapchat or, I don't it's know, lower. or others. It, it is comes that, a little it, bit slower, but at the end of the day, it's the same. Maybe there's a new service. I know that WhatsApp wasn't that huge in America. In Latin America, it's huge. WhatsApp, the, the app. That, I was in Bogota but, a year ago. Yeah. And I had never heard of WhatsApp. But I saw the woman who was taking me around. She's going on. And I go, what is it? She goes, oh, WhatsApp. Yeah, she yeah, looked at exactly. me like what I didn't know. This is like a 30-year-old woman. So <laughs> they're hip in South America, believe me. Oh, yeah. yeah. When I was in Mexico last year, they were, yeah, yeah it put me to shame. Like, I realized I have to of up course. my game. Everyone, yeah. sh everyone shares everything through WhatsApp. And there, but there you go. Is there, is, is, and leading back, and before I, if Scott comes back, opening up the questions, it's this emergence of new markets. And are, is the, for lack of a better word, dominance, I know we, we touched on this, Bob, already, but I want to get a Japanese festival buyer and you involved in this, is the dominance of our American, British, so on system um, losing, like shrinking? Or is it, just, is it just being siloed and a bunch of other music industries, going back to my question, are, <laughs> Are uh, inhabiting their own, uh, their own situation? There isn't like a strict formula. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's different. But there are, there are acts, certainly from South America, that are huge uh, blockbusters. Uh, so Astedio was one that uh, yeah. the leader just passed away. But they were huge. They were huge. I mean, they even sell tickets. They have the same ticket price as any American act. Uh, and there are different trends. I mean, reggae and ska is huge also in Latin America, and I think it's, that's the only place where it's huge. Uh, no, maybe Germany and, and, and Western Euro, Eastern Europe the same way, but it's trends, it's different. And maybe uh, someone like Bob thinks that 
Katy Perry is huge and it's the biggest. And that's true in a, in a certain pyramid way in the, the upper, upper class that it's informed. But in the mid and lower, they don't even know who she. I mean, maybe she. They know through a TV, but that's it. You know, well, just so I know. Care. So, did the mid and lower buy tickets? Sometimes they do. Yes, they they buy cumbia tickets or they go on to a disco. They don't buy the expensive ticket, but they certainly entertain themselves. Not the same way that Ameri Americans do, but they they buy other kind of tickets. Well, you know, well, I will say, you know, in terms of uh, South America... I mean, America, in terms of, if you, if you say buy, in terms of and what Scott was saying, I, te I definitely agree. If by buying you, you mean spending time, I would say, I would say definitely yes. Much more yeah, that's on the their local culture than on Katy Perry. I have no idea what I missed, new, but I'm jumping back is in. Is that the new currency, <laughs> time? The new okay. currency is time. That's I my agree. point. I agree. And, and one of the things you can do with it is different than just the, the one song, it's you need to get people addicted. You know, it's gotta be like a drug. Bob has done this brilliantly. I mean, once you start reading the leftist letter, you're fucking hooked, you're, you're, you're in, you're, you're in. And I've been maybe reading it for 15 years, could it be? Oh, it could be. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and, 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 you know, in the music industry, now, in, now what we want to do is get people hooked, coming back all the time. It's, for better or worse, it's what the successful YouTube stars have been able to, to, to achieve. Forget about what their content is and whether you like it, whether it's a Jenna Marbles or you know, somebody doing makeup tips or doing cover songs, it's irrelevant. They're really good at getting people to come back every week, twice a week, check out three or four minutes of what they're doing, yeah. and b the byproduct of that is success. But also, going back to South America, it is a very fluid world in that there's Lollapalooza in South America, Metallica goes to South America, the Stones were going to go to South America until the economics changed. And I agree, that's talking about one way, but it's something that never ha happened before to this degree. One, the acts in America, people in America, realize how much money there is there, and they want to go there. Now, the flip side, getting acts from there to come to the, around the world, that's not as strong, but I get email on a regular basis about acts in Brazil who make a fortune who you've never heard, who have a very strong live business. And, you know, I, things are burgeoning for those who are successful. I, plus, I actually think Latin America is really about to explode. That's my personal feeling. I remember the, the feeling I got after the, the, the Soviet Union collapsed and you could go to Eastern Europe for the first time openly and travel and you really really felt a spirit there if anyone traveled back in those you know late 80s early 90s you know to East Berlin or to, to, to any of the Eastern countries and now when I go to Chile or Colombia or Brazil you feel it bubbling up like something is happening there it's, it's, it's going, I think there's something happening and it's gonna pop. That's what I was saying at the beginning. I mean, we are living, I think, in the best of times in terms of music. Uh, everyone I know in Argentina or in, in the level I work with, they represent a band or they have something interesting coming. Uh, there's a, people in Spain as well, connected with people from Argentina, Chile, etc., etc., etc. And all of us are working like in reciprocity. Like I take uh, I take a band from Spain, you take a band from Argentina, etc. And some of that will come out good, I think. And, uh, so, have you broken any Spanish bands in Argentina? Uh, from Spain, uh, they have broken out. And I nowadays there's no Spanish band breaking out in terms of selling big amount of tickets. But I believe so. In the near future, there will be. What's going to change that's going to make that happen? The amount of Spanish co bands coming to Argentina or South America. If they yeah. keep on coming, I mean... So if I want to get a gig in Argentina and I work in Spain, how do I do that? As I was saying, if you share like a reciprocity with Argentine band, like there's an Argentine band called Babasonicos, the manager was just here, they're huge in Argentina, they maybe they will be huge in Spain or they've been trying to, certainly. Uh, and they, bon the other direction, Bombo Stereo. Yeah, you yeah, know? of course. Coming out of Colombia, well, breaking through you, Latin America. If you speak into about Europe. breaking out in terms of Katy Perry, the answer is no. 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 But I'm just saying, if I'm a band playing this festival here, 
and I want to play in Argentina, what's the first thing I should do? Should Talk I make? Matthias. Should I find an Argentinian band that I can? Of course, or a, a booker, or you know, uh, tell them, give them his. But just I just assume I like Bomba Stereo. You just mentioned a very good example. Bomba Stereo. It's they've been touring for the past five years. Very hard work. Very good albums. And now they're starting. They're starting to sell yeah. real tickets. I mean, but, but and they and they tour the Lollapalooza. I want to ask this question. So if if I in order to get an agent to book me, what do I need? Do I need someone who will do a trade out? Who will say, okay, I'll book an Argentinian band, or will you just? You buy? need a starting point. Yes, you need. And a starting you need an point. openness as well yeah. to to being able to understand the new market as Our well. Our bands that have breaking out changed. in Mexico, we have bands that are really young and have broke and sell more tickets in Mexico than anywhere else, and they travel the first times like for the they they they, they bought their own plane tickets the first two okay. years uh, in a row. But when they, played the in when they played in Mexico, was that They lost money the first time, the but, first but, but was years. that because <laughs> they did a trade out with a Mexican act? Not necessarily, not necessarily. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But, 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 but you know, to, to phrase it a different way, first of all, back to, to your hourglass funnel, it can't work for everyone. It's not scalable. No. It'll work for a few. And I had a conversation yesterday, um, and, and, I, and I was just discussing this, and it has to be for the right act. So it doesn't have to be a top pop band, but if you're a rock band and you're go, you want to go to Chile or, or Colombia to play, then you better be number one in your own market. You know, they don't, they don't want like, ah, oh, you're kind of not so good and nobody goes to see you. I don't think there's a, bi I mean, it's, it's not written in stone. I know, I know it's not written, but honestly, if, if everyone starts coming to the agents, yeah. there and saying, will you represent me? Will you trade shows? Will yeah. you book? Then all of a sudden it's like, well, how big are you there? What are you doing well, in your own market? Well, it comes back to metrics and maybe this is a, this, the future of our, of our business is a more, is more understanding and, and importance of data. If you're saying, oh, am I big at home? Prove it. Oh, I've got X amount of Facebook fans. I've got, and, and when I work with bands and you say, you walk, you, you ask an agent, they actually ask you these questions and you have to say, oh, we have, 20,000 Twitter followers or whatever, and unless there's four zeros in front of it, no one gives a shit. Yeah. So, and that's, I guess, goes back to the time thing, and I'm, you know, is that, do you feel that that is going to continue, like, like especially as a festival booker, are you looking at this more and more and more? Are you just saying they have to be a great band, but what if the Coop have no social media history whatsoever, just need, hypothetically? So I, yeah, I, hypothetically. I, 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 got a partner in London. I said, oh, I saw a great band last night, The Coup. And then he wrote back to me, quick email, check them out, interesting. Simple, e meaning that he's already, I just say The Coup, I don't need a CD off the band. He can just go on the internet yeah. and go The Coup and go, oh, I've seen a couple of videos, right, interesting. So you definitely need something out there uh, to, to back up. You know, your live show. You can't just be a live and, band. And, and you feel that that, do you feel that that's going to become increasingly important, or we hit sort of well, I mean, uh, my, my, my part <laughs> you know, didn't, didn't really say, oh, well, there's only, <laughs> only 300 views on their video. It's like, that's not important. The fact well, is actually, that it's there to, to see. If I see there's only 200 views, I say, it's not happening. Yeah. You shouldn't watch my videos, then. <laughs> Don't watch my videos, either. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but it's, uh, it, it, I was right. He, he, and, and, and you, you might think you don't do it, but trust me, every kid looks and goes, oh, nobody's watching it, not interested. They don't want to say, I want to be first. No, no, my it's daughter, so she goes, first aid kit, her favorite band. She was number nine. Nine views she got. She was so excited, yeah. the fact that she was number nine. Yeah. You know, so you're in there first. And that's, you well, know, good. so when you say, oh, it's How only 200 it? views, it's like, well, actually, it could be 200 today, but it could be 20,000 tomorrow. There's, uh, there's always going to be those, you know, leaders, the ones that want to... How old is your daughter? So I've got three. This, first aid kit, I love them. Yeah, love great band. I booked them for Fuji this year. Love great them. You know, so, I booked okay. Haim, uh, Lord, so first aid you know, all of these kind we, of bands. I want to open up to questions. I want to first aid kit. I, I want to open it up to questions yeah, but as well, Bob. Tell them to take their questions going. Okay. Why do you think first aid kit is so big now? 
because they're good bands. They're good no, 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 but he said yesterday. No, no, no. That would be my point. Is it a good band, or do you think they worked it? it oh, they, they very much the worked shit it. out of it. Of course they did. They connect with their audience. 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 They connect with But is that audience. enough, or do they so need they all the time? They have all the, they're uh, good band, and they connect. They're great on Facebook. They're always posting little personal photos and backstage yeah, and talking very personal yeah. so to yeah. end be and before kids love it they feel a part of it and like my daughter 18th birthday she gets the first aid kit very album good. like so she's got vinyl her first vinyl so now she's got a record collection or the start whoa, of whoa, one whoa, whoa, whoa. You know? does she have a turntable no she doesn't no. but she's got the download <laughs> one so she gets time. the download so she gets that straight away she can listen to it it's on all her devices yeah, yeah. but she's got the album she's got the signed poster and she's got the tote bag and there's one thing about that and she's before, invested in it but she it's interesting like it's, in it. you know That's i'm one of those that. people i i don't i don't own a cd player i have a record player and i buy vinyl and why, why? because i prefer cool. the sound and because it's cool it's no, 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 no. cool but you don't yeah. have a record player how could you prefer i said the sound? i have a record player i have a record oh, player a cd player i don't have a cd pl no but saying that and we're seeing vinyl sales increase and increase and maybe oh, it's... yeah but that's the thing is is there a focus on is there a focus on, on the tangible? It's a souvenir. It's a cult. So there isn't an increase Listen. to focus on the tangible. Like, we want to still hold something. No. We want to have so something. In Japan, CDs still sell because people don't understand, really, if you buy it off the internet and it's digital, you don't actually own it. So people still buy CDs in Japan, and they still buy vinyl. You know, vinyl's on the up, and CDs are still selling in Japan because people feel that they own something. You buy into it. You you have well, one, one thing is consumers are irrational. That's let's start with that. And and this whole <laughs> this whole vinyl revival is, is a romanticizing of a period that sucked. When you know Bob lived through it, I lived through it. It, it was not fun. You know, you could only listen to. 15 to 20 minutes of music and you had to clean the needle and you'd scratch a record and it was warped and you couldn't own very many and God forbid you want to get romantic with a girl and then shit hurry up the record in the side's <laughs> almost over you know hold That's that all thought true. you know when the CD came it's like 70 minutes yeah <laughs> Thank you know man it's like so okay, well, I want to on go that note it, because you're the only person on my page so on how do you view the vinyl revolution Scott Vinyl revolution, it, it, it's not a revolution. It's silly. It's, it's, like it's dance fine. Dance it's, <laughs> you, you, it's fine. The, the, it's a fashion statement. It's a, the, the music yeah. sounds great. People like playing around with it. It's cool, but of course. it's not going to. I can't listen to it in my car. I can't take them in my pocket like my, my, the 30 million songs in my pocket right now. I mean, it, come on, it's not the future. It's, it's a nice little side business. So on this note, before we open it up to questions, I'd love you guys at the end of the conference and everything to give your final thoughts towards where do you feel the music industry will be in three to five years' time? Um, please keep it to a couple sentences. I think it'd be, uh, it, you know, it's difficult for bands trying to break through. Um, and there will be a few that rise to the top, but if, if a band is really, they're only in it because they're into the music and they want to be, they're not into it because they want to make money, I think they will survive, you know, and, they, and if you like playing and you want, to, you want to be a musician, then you should stick with it. But actually making a living out of it is quite hard. And the, most of the money is going to go to those bands at the very top. So if digital distribution is crap for anybody who sells a couple of hundred CDs, because the, 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 the amount of money they're going to get from a digital distribution deal for selling a thousand downloads is like, well, you're going to get 10 quid. Yeah, but my, nothing. You, know, you have to sell 50 billion but, tra uh, songs. But nothing ever changed. You know, when you were Elvis Presley, you were big and everyone else was small. You, they wouldn't like there were millions of musicians making a living when Elvis was number one and when the Beatles were number one and when Pink Floyd was number one and when U2 was number one, you know? I don't go through it. There's always the top. That, I no, think. I know, Scott. I, I mean, there is a change because there were, I mean, just to tell you why this happened, used to be driven by radio. And every market was slightly different. I'll use the American market because the American market drove the marketplace then. A, you had to get signed by a major label. That was very difficult. Then you had to make a record, which was not cheap. 
Then the label had to decide you were worth promoting. Then they had to get you on the radio. In addition, in most marketplaces, there were two or three radio stations. If it made it on the radio, you knew it. And in addition, if that band came to town, you would see it. There was a terrible band by the name of Black Oak, Arkansas. They had a whole career because they would go where no one else would go. They would go to Montana. They would go to North Dakota. So therefore, there was a mid-level artist. The Beatles could not play everywhere. The Stones could not play everywhere. And there was a limited amount. So you bought a limited number of records. You had the Beatles and the Stones, but you had something else. Today, when there's no center, okay, and there's a huge hole blown in the whole system, very few people get enough mind share and time from everybody to even be known, even though we might, let me just finish but, one second, even though we might say they're crappy. So we still have, I believe conceptually in the past, we had superstars and everybody else. But now we have superstars and the people are at the bottom. Well, I don't, I, see, this is where I'll disagree in, in with you on that. In three to five years? Be, because, yeah, can I say something wait, wait, about wait, next year? So, what, so, what I see, what I see, what I, what, I feel that we're in the midst of the bubble is going to explode, and I, I made a I make a comparison between the food markets. I mean, in the terms of what you eat. So I think in the near future we'll have the the McDonald's uh, music, we'll have the the big chains music like the huge American made, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, or maybe Argentinian made as well, but chain music. <laughs> then you will have the the middle tier music. Maybe a little bit more interesting or, or cultural, savvy, etc. And then you will have the gourmet, the bully, the Michelin stars, the, the I don't know, the Tom Yorks of the future or whatever. Well, it, it isn't about money. I, I, I strongly agree with, it, with you in terms of paying for music, that's over. I mean, it's, it's in terms of, of, of time, of interest. Maybe you will pay for a souvenir. Who knows what souvenir but will I'm, that be? And I'm agreeing with you. See, this is... You know the, the long tail theory, for, you, I'm not going to yeah, re yeah. review it, I assume everyone's going to know it. So the, yeah. I think it was flawed because they missed part of it. They only looked at the head and the tail and there's yeah. actually a body in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. And the long tail doesn't work because if you're in the tail of some unknown, unsigned, yeah. anybody cousin, can put music, yeah. there is no work in that. It, there's no business in there, but there are some really cool indie labels all around the world that are that that work in the niches that actually make a lot of money. I know because we distribute them. It is a good we'll give you business. An example of two. Uh, in which country? Well, any we country. Yeah. <laughs> right. You're sitting next to one in, of them in now. Tolerancia Can you? And in Mexico, maybe? Like yeah. I mean, labels that generally, make, you know, if you want to say nuclear blast. War, Domino, uh, of course, yeah, Domino, Warp, uh, Rough Trade, Beggars Group. Yeah, Beggars Group are not a small company. <laughs> well, they're not, but they're made out of, of, of middle yeah. tier. Uh, yeah, middle tier. Small, yeah, of yeah. course. The, the, there, there actually is a decent sized business yeah. there. They can but make that's a living. The body. Yeah. Adele is from an indie label. I well, mean, yeah. Let's go back that's to the three to yeah. five years. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. What do we do? In the classic rock era was the Renaissance. If you follow art, there was only one Renaissance. People didn't stop painting and sculpting thereafter, okay? But there was this one peak. So to look at today's marketplace through the rearview mirror makes no sense. Whether it be classic rock, whether it be CD, whether it be MTV, that's all done. So if you look at today's thing, we have, a cons we have the end, which is access, streaming, and recorded music. Revenue will only go up. It's not going to go down. How big it is, is another thing, okay? We, at the other end, we have these superstar acts, which are making a fortune. I believe that what Shane is saying is true. We will have better and better curation. Certainly within five years, that will look much better, okay? So... As we go forward, the great thing about music is it's an innovative, disruptive scene. Over the last couple of years, we saw electronic music. When electronic music crossed to pop, it became interesting. Wake Me Up by Avicii, biggest played track on Spotify last year. So what keeps us all going, what keeps the fan going is great music. Everything else, they really don't care about.
They don't really yeah. care about whether the sponsorship or the social media, they want the track. Yeah. And the other stuff comes in because you have to survive making music. So, so, so on that note, uh, thank you very much to our panelists. And, uh, and thank you to, okay? Enjoy the festival.